Hello, and welcome to another fun-filled Sunday. Fuck off, asshole! Leave me alone! Don't you know it's fucking Sunday? today is we're going to patch together a new instrument and we're going to dig into <laughs> uh we're going to dig into a new pack from our friends at Toy Box the sampling pack ah! and uh I'm pretty excited about this what we're going to do is um I've got just a f a file queued up well i did have it queued up that um is is kind of it's just uh it's a cover song that i was working on from nine inch nails that i never really did anything with but uh something i just did it's kind of cooked up for fun so you may hear bits and parts of that uh during today's episode but what i'm basically going to do is i'm going to pull that that file into the sample player and show you how it works. So let's begin. And I don't think for today, I mean, we might, we're probably not going to need these things. So let's just take care of that right away. And let's clean up and give ourselves some room to breathe here. And then let's say we're going to look at toy box. If I can spell. Sampling pack. So lots of things in the sampling pack. Um, some of the main audio uh, generators to be aware of are mainly the samplers themselves. So the really cool things we're going to go over today, um, granular uh, sample player and the uh, sample player. Now there's also a granular sampler and a uh, just a sampler as well. And um, I'll kind of go over what the what the difference between those are uh but there's also a chainer sequence so there's there's all there's different sequencers available here and uh utilities as well so gate repeats and different midi uh options that will help with uh midi and sampling and then dj filters like sampler filters so uh kind of a different flavor uh filter that are, I think these are actually filters that are built into samplers, from what I recall reading from the website. But you can check out more information uh, from the guys at Toybox by going to toyboxaudio.com and uh, cool stuff. Got my coffee here, ready to rock and roll, and let's dig in. I'm going to I'm going to add a granular sample player. And I like this little GUI, <laughs> this little GUI's interface because it just says load samples here. Drop them here. Now, what is the difference between that and say so that's the granular sample player. What's the granular sampler? Okay, and what's that? Essentially, it's the same thing, okay? But what it does is it allows recording of uh, audio. So I could, theoretically, I could record uh, audio in here. And 
and I could, um, for example, uh, I could try to, I don't know if I can patch this in or not through the input. Maybe I can try. Um, but it would allow me to record, essentially record audio into the samplers. So it's the same thing, has the same playback engine as the granular sampler, or sorry, granular sample player block. So that's this one. But the granular sampler allows you to record audio as well. So it's a sampler. <clears throat> so a sample player, you put audio into it, sampler, record audio. So it's kind of, it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, that may, so yeah, that's what I was saying. This is the same playback engine as this, but the sampler records audio and the sample player does not. I took a small break to see if I could figure out the input on this thing. I don't think it's going to work. So I'll delete the wire. But it's not going to work because I can't change the input in Pro Tools while I'm recording. So new feature. Maybe that does work in one of the new versions of Pro Tools. I don't know. Got to get the latest version. Um, but um, this is really cool at any rate. And we can have plenty of fun just dropping in samplers and learning how the playback engine works. So... We're going to go with the sample player, and then let's look up the just regular sample player. So I'm going to look at this guy here, and here we go. Drop zone. So same, same thing. I love when you hover over it. There's information. Love that. Love. Because that's what you need. People got to learn this stuff. So start, sets the start position, length. And uh, uh, you start to see this, this interface light up when you, when you drag samples into it. So it's a really beautiful thing. So let's get a mixer going. And then... Um, Yeah, that's what I want for channel. And let's just start getting patched up here. Purple. And we're going to go out. of the first one into uh we could probably just keep this all on one rack really until we need more room let's make this simple and then we'll take the second one and go out into number two good and now we are patched up let's save some room and just kind of clean things up here we go all right, good deal. So let's take my um, my little song or file and drag it into the sample player. There we go. So waveform display. So you see that as you as I said, you kind of see it light up. So you see the the actual waveform come in here. So if it's a drum beat, if it's a song, what you know, sample, whatever it is, you start to see that. So coarse, coarse tuning, nice. You can detune it. Decay sets the decay time of the envelope. Cool. It's got a built-in envelope. FM, built-in FM. Cool. So it treats this like a sound generator. It treats this like an oscillator almost. So this could just be, you know, I'm I'm looking at this by itself because I want to learn about it, but you this could be just be mixed in with all the other synths or oscillators or whatever. And you can control pitch, you can do whatever you want with these things. Um just like with um uh, an oscillator. 
So there's the chorus and fine tuning and different things. So right now we're just looking at the sample player. So drag and drop file to load. That makes sense. Um, the sample playback engine has four quality modes. Low, so low quality with no sampling or interpolation. Lo-fi, gritty sound, high quality. Old uh, emulates a 12-bit hardware sampler. Old 2 emulates a 16-bit. Uh, when the map button is enabled, samples are mapped across the keyboard, are, are selected by the pitch input, and FM mode, let's see, uh, consists of five FM modes. Cool. Frequency, direct drive, value of FM input. Okay, so those are the FM modes. So awesome. And there's, you know, here's the additional options that you can get back to. So right now we're on the one uh, playback mode. And, um, you know, we can do shuffle or free or loop or reset. So, you know, different things can trigger the playback so you can set how this thing plays it back. But uh, the simplest thing to do is just to start checking it out and hearing some sound. So uh, if we hover over that, it says waveform display, click to set position and trigger sample playback, right click to clear all samples. So literally click to set position and trigger the playback. And that's it. <clears throat> That's the one. So I can click at different positions of the file and play it back. And this is a long file, which is cool. It's got some guitar in there. It's got some voice effects. It's got a lot of different textures. I think I, I, think I used reactor on a lot of the synths on this too it's pretty cool but anyhow you know pretty pretty basic that's the sampler that's the decay so i guess once it finally gets to the end here's course tuning Keep that one on a low, just a low texture, just to give it some, you know, give us a, so that's a baseline. This is the basic sample player, right? Now I'm gonna add the same sample to the granular sample player. This guy is freaking awesome. All right, so same kind of situation. The, uh, the GUI lights up. Um, click to set start position and trigger sample playback. So same thing. It's going to do the same thing. And we also have, you know, the different playback options and different select modes. Uh, different options here in terms of the grain length, density, fade. So that's um, a cool thing, you know. So we're hearing uh, the other sampler a little bit. But now we're going to start hearing. Ooh, I just I just right clicked to clear. So wrong, wrong move. So now I just need to get it back in there. There we go. Right click to clear all samples. Double click in the area to the left of the waveform display to show a list of all currently loaded samples. Ah. Ah, that's nice. That is very nice. That's that's cool. So, all right, cool. So, I'm just going to click once to set the start position.
so I can tell this when to start. I can tell it how to play back. So I'm going to mess with some of the other options on this other page. And for example, I'm going to adjust the grain length and density. I'm going to start adjusting some of these scan modes. So you see once it just kind of plays it through. And then we have ping pong, position is scanned in one direction, then reverses, continuously looping forward and backwards in a ping pong fashion. So that's kind of cool. Let's mess with grain length. All right, let's see. See, it's been on key tracking most of this time. I've been trying to figure out why it sounds a little weird. And here, we finally figure it out. Yeah, sounds very weird with the key tracking on. When enabled, you can control the pitch of the sampler. Yeah, makes sense when you're not playing something like this. Uh, but disable the key tracking if you're playing kind of like a song or some sort of thing that's supposed to be in the key of whatever this is recorded at. So. Of the grains, so that you know, 
this can also adjust. This doesn't have to be so static, like a static setting. You just set it to and leave it, and you kind of, you know, the length of the grains can adjust as well. Same with the density. Number of grains active at the same time. So it'd be cool to have that as a default kind of a high setting you know, jitter it down to a lower setting. It sets the density jitter. And then I actually, it sounds cool with this original sample running at about, you know, uh, one octave up, basically. Much cooler now with some filter territory. Toy box, the sampler pack. The sample player and granular sample player, along with DJ filter and sampler filter. Until next time.